So I have the distinct pleasure of switching the mic on Quint Lears. Uh, Quint Lears, probably best known or, or known everywhere, but best known for interviewing every new home sales professional and marketing professional they can find. Uh, eager, always, always, always to share as much information as possible from others. So I have the distinct pleasure of now getting Quint to share his information with us. So part of what we want to talk about is your new book, which uh, we're here in Builder Books at the International Builder Show. And uh, we are staring right now at Quint's new book, uh, Partnering with Brokers to Win More Sales. Uh, fantastic title. Um, Quint, I, don't, I guess, tell us a little bit about the book, why you wrote it, what got you started. Well, this is a uh, real several years, well, actually, a decade of hard won, you know, experience in new home sales. So I actually highlight a lot of my mistakes, a lot of my growth. I, I really had a shoestring budget. Went through the downturn of two, mid two thousand seven, eight, nine. Um, you know, almost went out of business. Mm. Actually, tried out to become a firefighter. I, I mean, I was out of money. Called a friend. Said, I don't even know what I'm going to do. He says, "Look, why don't you get into a, a, a real job? You know, a steady job that, you know, with the benefits." I'm like, "What do you have? What do you have in mind?" And he, he says. Uh, why don't you become a firefighter? And at the time, it sounded really good. Mm. And the next day, I went, I literally took dress shoes off, took my tie off, took my jacket off, and ran hoses, and I passed the physical exam, and I was in the line, and I said um, to the gentleman who won in front of me, I said, hey, how long have you wanted to be a firefighter? He goes, my whole life. I'm so proud to be here. And at that moment, I realized I was making a huge mistake. Mm because I didn't want to be a firefighter. Yeah. It's a noble profession, it's just that I loved new home sales. So I realized two, twofold. Number one, I would be walking away from, from my dream, but on top of that, and to double make it worse, was I was, I was stealing a dream from somebody else. Hmm. I would have kept somebody else from becoming a firefighter, and I thought, I can't do this. I went back into my model home, canceled all my advertising, all my stuff that was all ego-driven. I was in the, in the and I'm not saying it's, you know, billboards are bad, but I was in billboard. I was all these high gloss magazines. I was in the um, movie theaters. I canceled mm. it all, put it all back, in, back into training, trained under Tom Ritchie, spent a lot of money learning from the best in the business. Um, I didn't have a marketing budget, so I leveraged the real estate agent's marketing budget. So really this book um, is what I've done to go from becoming a, trying out to become a firefighter to national salesperson of the year, um, going from you know a builder was doing six homes a year to we're doing about close to 300 mm -hmm. in, in a down market in a competitive market and uh, we're smoking people because we have tapped into the power of the brokers mm -hmm. um, and by the way you talked about the title yeah I wanted to call it get over it <laughs> that's a great name yeah because the, the and, and it, builders like I wish you know maybe th there was no such thing as a broker and we could just take it and save the three percent but the fact is the statistics are out 88 mm percent -hmm. of all transactions have a broker involved. 88%. 88%. So, um, you know, these are national statistics. 64% of buyers who sold a used house are going to use that broker to go into their next or new home. So, so tell us about that. So you've got obviously a lot of builders that are, just like you said, they sort of react when you talk about working with brokers. They're like, why would I want to give away 3%, 4%, you know, somebody else is giving away 7 you know, other than the get over it. Um, and, and other than some of the ideas that you've shared here in the book in terms of the way to make it work, like, I guess, what's your first go-to response when they say something like that? Yeah, so if you want to do that, then basically you're fighting over the remaining 12% of buyers that do not have a real estate broker. And how do you do that? You just spend more money than the other guy, mm. right? So um, the, the real estate's agents right now the facts are they dominate and this ask Meyer Myers Barnes he just uh, he says look even with all the technology even with the webs even with the SEO the real estate agents are up higher than they've ever been and it's because guess what they have social media too and they smoke us mm -hmm. they smoke the builders they smoke these things um, if you go to Zillow well, we don't need them because they got Zillow go type in Zillow mm -hmm. guess what's gonna pop up face of an agent <laughs> Okay, guess where that agent just did? Sold the used house. It's going to direct that sales. So there's a, a lot of work that needs to be done. This book mm -hmm. is not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't answer. It's not, you know, exhaustive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't answer every question. But it's a, it's a my best start to tackle this very difficult problem that nobody wants to talk about. That we have two very powerful organizations: mm -hmm. the National Association of Home Builders and the National uh, Association of Realtors (NAR), mm -hmm. and they're not working well together. And I want to do is bring these 
comp not you know I'm not talking about necessarily those entities, but to bring the real estate agent and the builder. Let's make up. Let's synergize with each other. Let's get over the past. Mm -hmm. Let's start dominating and help. And with the aim and final end of helping the buyer. We are doing a frankly a huge disservice to a home buyer if we show them a used house. Mm. I've had full grown men almost in tears. They come in my model home and they're like, Quint, nobody, nobody showed this to me. Mm. Why? I said, let me tell you why. Mm. Because this community is not on MLS, it's not on Zillow. As a matter of fact, it's not even on Google Maps. Mm. And so because it's not there yet, your agent basically just showed you a used house and you bought it. Mm. But if the agents were, were, if we trained the agents, and that's what I go through, how to create a broker program, how to educate them, how to position yourself and your company as a subject matter expert mm -hmm. that you're here to serve, I create the, a relationship whereas the broker is my buyer. And it's almost like the, the, the goose that laid the golden egg. It's I get them eggs. and they just keep bringing them to me yeah. and bringing them to me and bringing them to me. So, so I want to talk a little bit about the um, sort of the underlying theme of a lot of your statements. And this is one of the reasons I have so much respect for Quint is your, your motivations are always coming from an honorable place, right? You, you talked about how you want to do this as a service for the buyers to help to make sure that the brokers know to work with new homes. Um, and then you talk about your sort of your goal to bring together these two large associations of home builders and the association of realtors. Um, and then you talk about, you know, you just, uh, I just learned about the whole fireman story just now, and you tell me about how you didn't want to take a spot away from somebody else who had that dream. I guess so, maybe share sort of like how that motivation just sort of keeps you focused, because it, it seems to. Yeah, it's, it, I shouldn't even be in this business, have the job, have the title, have the prestige. I mean, by the way, this is actually published by the National Association of Home Builders. I'm very proud. Thank you to Elizabeth and Patricia. Um, I used to think very, very low of myself. You know, I hung out with the wrong crowd, involved, I drank too much, I failed out of college, not once, but twice, gave up, I pumped gas in the United States Air Force for four years because I didn't make it through the initial program that I wanted to go through. So mm. basically, I was a failure. Mm. And to be in a position now where I can give back, and, um, and I, so I, I want to say that I know what it's like to feel low. I know what it's like to feel like I'm not going to make it financially. I know what it's like to have three kids, I'm sorry, no, this is before I, no, I had a baby on the way, um, have a young wife and feel like, where am I going to move if I don't make my house payment um, when it's Christmas? Mm -hmm. And it just seems like I've always been able to just, just barely get through, figure it out. And uh, I'm very proud to be in this home building industry, to have something that I literally love to do. Yeah. And I have sure. fun every day. Um, and so, you know, if anybody benefits from the book, it's great. You know, yeah. uh, you know there's a drive to make it successful. But I, I think it comes from being a failure mm -hmm. and then sensing that um, and then I don't know, just wanted to give back, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's a, uh, it, it, I, I appreciate that answer very much. Um, so one of the things that um, also I think is a little different about you and your book is that, um, you know, we're standing here in the Builder Bookstore at the Builder Show. There are probably a couple hundred different books by a couple hundred different authors. And the majority of the folks that are writing books here and not taking anything away from them at all, including myself, are folks that are writing books that are around the subjects that support their business, right? So we got a lot of sales trainers that write sales books. You got a lot of marketing people that write marketing books. Your full-time job, you are a new home salesperson. You are in the model home five, six days a week. So you are functioning, selling new homes every day, every month. That's how you earn your living. And yet you decided to take the time to put this book together with the best of your ideas to be able to, to share it with folks. It, it doesn't, you know, obviously you're going to earn some income when somebody sells a book or buys a book, but it's not, uh, you're not doing it to support your business. You're, you're doing it to help, right? I am, uh, and I wanted to partner with the National Association of Home Builders. I mean, it's, it's the organization in the housing industry. It's a $33 trillion business is the housing industry. And, and to be able to be partnered with them and to, you know, to have the, you know, their logo on the back, it makes me very, very proud. Um, they've been great to work with. I would encourage people, you know, and just getting involved with the Sales and Marketing Council, the National, National Sales and Marketing Council, the Builder Books, um, Sales and Marketing Ideas Magazine. What you don't realize is that there are people and their full-time job is mm -hmm. to try to find interesting ideas. And I meet people, newhomesales.com. My mm -hmm. whole goal is to find people with interesting ideas and mm -hmm. feature them. 
but they don't, it goes back to that mindset of like, they're not going to want to listen to me. <laughs> they're, you know, my ideas aren't good. I'm a, you know, there's somebody else better and smarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? It, if you do it, you do it. You know what I mean? So that, uh, I, can I say want to encourage I was, you. I'm sorry. I want to encourage people, write an article for SMC, send it to them. Um, write a, call them and say, look, I don't even have a book yet. I've got an idea. Can you help me work through it? Um, uh, uh, Elizabeth Harkey her, she's like, I gotta go meet with these people. I'm looking, I'm looking right now mm. for new ideas. I mean, how? What an amazing thing, right? Yeah. So I encourage people get involved. Yeah. Great tip, great ideas, uh, and I and I can say that um, just in the short time that I've been here in the store, I've seen this shelf restocked a couple times. So these books are moving. Um, obviously, they can purchase the book here at the show, but afterwards at builderbooks.com. Is there a favorite? spot in the book you know maybe uh just something you want to share i do man and it's from our mutual friend tom ritchie and it says why builders need brokers and he says you pay the broker when the home sells you pay the bank when it doesn't legend Mm -hmm. tom ritchie mic drop right there that that right there you want to look you're going to pay somebody right Mm -hmm. the brokers have the buyers let, let's cooperate with them. Let's leverage them. Let's get that impact um, instead of rather just paying interest on a, on a house that's sitting there mm. and that negative momentum for your company. But it goes way more into that. I've got tips and suggestions and ideas that, that have been helpful to me. I've personally read the book and it's fantastic. Um, you know, Quint, I really appreciate you taking the time and let me sort of grab the mic here. It's been an absolute honor to, uh, to interview you and to, to get to talk about your book. And thank you for your endorsement on the back, Dennis O'Neill, president of O'Neill Interactive. It's, a, it's an honor to know you're doing some amazing things. Thanks for sponsoring uh, Builder Books and the giveaways. And uh, you're always involved in doing great things, giving back. My pleasure. Thanks, Quinn. Thank you. Thank you.